Praise the Lord. My name is Ude Samson Okechuku. I'm privileged to serve in the CCU. To the glory of God, sometimes ago, two uh, just two or three, three months ago, I came in here to tell the people of God that God blessed us despite the devil's report or the do doctor's report. The doctor said that I have low span count. And when I heard the word of a servant here, the, the servant said that it didn't say be spanful, but be fruitful. So I keyed into that. And just last week, we were expecting our child two weeks ago. And just last week, I was posted to serve in my unit at the testimony stand. I said, Lord, I'm standing here. Please let it be, let it be that I share my own testimony this week. And God answered. Just two days ago, God blessed us with another baby. We had our first one baby girl. Today we have gotten our baby boy. Put your hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes, Yerima Benjamin is my name. Uh, I'm here to testify to the glory of God of this great commission. On 25th of August 2013, this particular baby was adopted right in the auditorium here. And to the glory of God now, right here is in my hands. I'm here to give glory to God. Praise the Lord. This baby was taken away two weeks ago. But God of Goshen brought the child back today. Please put your hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. My name is Yakubu Neku Gospi. I'm here to testify the goodness of God in my life. I, in fact, I have not been paid my tithe before. I have not been paying, I mean, given sacrifice. And even uh, arteries, arteries have not been going. But immediately I started paying my trust, I mean, sacrifice, give my sacrifice, pay my tithe. And yesterday, I pray when I was going out to ask, I say, God, as I'm going out to do your will, do my own will for me. So I immediately, immediately we finished, we came back. I now got a call that I should come and resume work tomorrow morning. So I give God all that glory. Put your hands some more together for Jesus. Double portion. My name is Faith Adedi. I serve in CCU. I want to appreciate the name of the Lord for what he has done in my life. I started working on my book project since two thousand uh, four years ago. I released my first two books, 2011. God gave me an unusual inspiration on the subject of marriage and relationship, and I write on them. I want to thank God because when I brought my first two books to mommy to see, she said this was a great work, and she personally recommended her editor to work on the books. To the glory of God, 2011, the two books was published, Single Stop the Phone and Cuddle Your Spouse. I want to thank God for the sources that God granted me after that incident, as if the devil would not allow the rest to be published. I want to appreciate God. We kept praying, applying the blood of sprinkling. To the glory of God, the four other titles were printed in Germany. This last two Saturdays ago, all the six books were launched to the glory of God. I want to thank God for mommy for what he has done because she really gave me a professional counsel and motherly guide on how to work on this project. And that is why I have these perfect copies. Praise the name of the Lord. You can make that hand clap bigger for Jesus. Oh. Double question. I am here to testify the goodness of the Lord. It was terrible. I have two more in my breast here. I went to ABU Zaria to do operation there. They call it off. I went to a national hospital. They charged me I cannot afford it. Then I went to uh, Kefi last Wednesday. They booked me on Thursday. When I got there, I paid for my surgery money. When they do everything, give me uh, drips and other things to start the operation. Already when they are doing this uh, 
a covenant of settlement. I told God that you should operate me, not doctor. So when they finished giving me, they, will not, they said they will not even give me sedation because I'm hypertensive, that I will be present where they are doing everything. So when the doctor dead in the place, later he went to court me, he was a papet, papet, he didn't see anything. He called other doctor, say, I don't know what I'm seeing. Come and pap come and papet, I don't know what I'm seeing. Madam, what is wrong with you? I said nothing. I, they said, Madam, stand up. God have done your operation for you. And I have the tumor for four years. I want to glorify the goodness of the Lord. I'm a newcomer here. This is my fourth time of coming here. The same God will settle your health today, Jesus mighty name.
this church on child dedication day. As a matter of fact, that baby was brought for dedication that day. And the anointing on that child says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. That child was stolen from here, and the, the person that stole the child took the child all the way to a fire bomb. But God, whose eye is everywhere, went that far and recovered the child, and that child is today delivered to the parents. I like that couple again. Please bring that child here. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. While they are coming, I like the studio to show us the evil woman that stole that child. It does not matter where those things that belong to you have been taken to. I decree full recovery for you in the name of Jesus. This is not a church to toy with. In case there are such evil people around here, please note, when you come to church, mind your business. Don't touch what is not yours, not even a viral. Don't. Don't. There is a God in this place that is working very strangely. Don't ask what can he do. Don't ask what God can God do. Anyone whose property is being taken by whatever means, I decree supernatural restoration for you. This child was anointed at the day of dedication and the anointing on the child kept speaking. I'd like to assure you the anointing on each of you as member of this assembly is speaking every day. Be conscious of it. Today again, we are going to be anointing our children. All of our children will be anointed. All of them. And I'd like you to know that there is a seal of the Lord. There is a special place that God has for this commission. Be conscious of it. No devil will cheat you any longer. In the precious name of Jesus. This child shall be great. This child will experience strange greatness. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please get back to your seat. Now, everybody rise to your feet. Don't take God for granted. It's not every child that is lost that is recovered. I'd like us to give quality thanks and praise to God. Amen. Listen to this. And as you are thanking him, thank him by faith that whatever is stolen from your life shall be restored back to you. Thank him. Oh yes, he answers prayer. Oh yes, he answers prayers. The God I serve answers prayers. Only Jesus answers prayers. Oh yes, he answers prayers.
We had a situation in our church in Lagos two years ago, a child was stolen, and God, who is never late, two years after, the child was recovered. Not only recovered, the person that stole the child got blinded in the two eyes and eventually died of strange diseases. Nobody touched them. I'd like you to know that this is not a place to toy with. In case you are here, you are a thief. Forget it. Your business cannot survive here. <laughs> cannot survive here. When this place was dedicated, it was declared that no evil will step in here. Please beware. A place where the dead is being raised, anybody can be killed there by God. I therefore decree that any evil intended person that steps in here without repentance will always pay dearly for it in the name of Jesus. Anyone that seeks to tamper with your joy for coming to worship God will have their joy taken away from them. This week, you are going to receive testimonies of recoveries. Testimonies of recoveries. 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 Testimonies of recoveries. Give God a big hand, everybody. He's done it. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Amen. Please get seated again. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. Quickly before we take the message for today, haven't thanked God for all of these great miracles and healings. I'd like you to know that the task set before us is the task of recovering souls from the pit of hell. We are on a rescue mission as God's people. You must not close your eyes until God's purpose as assigned to us as a ministry is fulfilled. This year God gave us a mandate that this church just as it is with all of our churches we double in number and it has not changed. We had the first phase of it concluded at the, month, at the end of the month of July and the second phase commenced four weeks ago. It's supposed to last for five weeks and this week we are stepping into is the fifth week. The fifth week. The fifth week. In the first phase we had a mandate for winning seven souls and establishing them in the house of the Lord. And in the second phase, we have one winner, one soul every week, another five, making it all together 12, 12. Which means every winner is expected by the end of next week to have won 12 souls and established in the house of God. If yours is not yet done, you know you can't go to sleep. You cannot go to sleep. You cannot go to sleep. Therefore, this week must be a week of intense soul winning effort. Intense. Intense. Say with me, intense. Just like you pray and fast for miracles, nothing stops you from praying and fasting for souls to be won this week. I must deliver my own five souls in this second phase. I must make it up. In case you didn't make up up to seven before, I must make it up to 12 by the end of this week. I must make it up. I must make it up by the help of God. Be determined, be intense, be zealous, be committed, be driving towards it. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all these other things shall be added to you. Shall be added to you. Yesterday, by the grace of God, I was out again in the morning with other brethren. God gave me six solid souls. And all of them were excited. Some of them in church this morning. Others are coming in you know, following services this morning. I'd like you to know that God is not a joker. What he says he will do, he will surely do. Don't play with God. Take God serious. You have not won one soul. This week, you must win a soul. Tell your neighbor for me, you must win at least a soul this week. That is the test of a true winner. True winners are soul winners. True winners are soul winners. This week, you will not disappoint heaven. 
I didn't hear your amen. amen. You will not disappoint heaven. Amen. In Jesus' wonderful name. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, help me this week. Help me this week. I will not fail. Come next Sunday. I am bringing my harvest into the house of the Lord. Raise your voice and say it right now. Come next Sunday. I am bringing my bountiful harvest of souls into the house of the Lord. One, two, three, four, five. I'm bringing them. Six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. I'm bringing them. I receive grace of you, Lord. Anoint me today for so winning. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. And all of you who believe that, say the loudest, Amen. Amen. The prophetic focus for this month, as caption is, I will bring you health and cure. God himself said it. I will bring you, I will bring you health and cure. Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 6 and 7, he said, And I will set to them according to their past estate. Verse 7, I will set to them, I will build them, I will make them return. I will cause the captivity of Judah and captivity of Israel to return. And I will build them, I will set to them, I will build their health as at the first as it was in the beginning in genesis chapter 1 verse 31 when everything he made was very good i will return them to the first estate i will restore their health to them i will restore their kidney i will restore their liver i will restore their breast i will restore their eyes i will restore their tongue i will restore their hair i will restore their health unto them somebody receive the restoration of your health today A series of teaching every Sunday. His caption is There are no balm in Gilead, taken from Jeremiah chapter 8, from verses 22 and from verses 20 to 22. He said, The summer is past and we have not seen our health. He said, For the, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we have not saved. That means we are not healed. And when Father, for the heart of the daughter of my people, am I hot? God is hot when you are hot. God feels the pain that you are having the pain of. And then in verse 22, he said, is there no balm in Gilead? Why are they suffering like this? I have a cure for them. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people recovered? That means when the balm arrives, when the physician arrives, sicknesses and diseases have no right to remain again. And I'm glad to let you know that the physician Jesus himself is here this morning. At his appearance this morning, every affliction of your life must give way in the name of Jesus. The balm in Gilead is the description of God's word. That is, the word of God is the balm in Gilead. The word balm also means medicine. It means medicine. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. My son, attend to my words. Give here unto my saying. Keep them in the midst of your eyes. Hide them in your heart. Let them not depart from you. He said, for they are health to them. They are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. They are life. Say with me, life. Unto those that find them. When you find the world, you have found life. Until you find the world, you have not found life and health, health to all their flesh. That means medicine. God's word is applicable to every part of your flesh. Because in the first place, your flesh was made from the word of God. From the breath of God. And God said, he said to them, let them be fruitful. And God breathed into them the breath of life. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. He breathed into them the breath of life and man became a living soul. And the breath of God is the word of God. For every word of God is by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The breath of God is the word of God. So God spoke to the body of man. He became fruitful. He spoke to the body of man to become a living soul. They shall be medicine to all their body. Medicine to all their body. Medicine to all their body. So as I'm speaking to you right now, you are taking medicine. You are taking medicine. I'd like you to believe in the word the way you believe in the drugs the doctor gave to you. 
When doctor gives you drug, you don't ask questions. You are not a pharmacy. You have not been to any pharmaceutical factory before. You didn't know how they made it, whether it is chalk they gave to you to drink. But you just believed it. You believed it even when it is bitter. You believe it and swallow it religiously. Believing that it will bring cure to your body. Why don't you believe God's word in the same way? That as I'm receiving the word, I'm receiving life. I'm receiving healing to my body. The word of God is missing. God's word contains capsules of health. So receiving God's word is receiving God's life. It is full of vitamins and nutrients. Luke chapter 6 verse 17. The people came to Jesus to hear and to be healed. To hear. The later part of that verse said, they came to him. They came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. So hearing precedes healing. Hearing the word precedes healing. They came to hear him. They came to hear him and to be healed. All of you who have come to hear God this morning, the resultant effect of it will be healing to your body in the name of Jesus. They came to hear. They came to hear. So me, I am here to hear. I have come to hear. And as a result, I will be healed. I have come to hear. And as a result, I will be healed. I have come to hear. I have come to hear Jesus. And as a result, I am healed. Believe that, say loud, Amen. One word will bring healing. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word, singular, and he healed them. But more words will bring health. There is a difference between healing and health. Healing is a process of recovery from sickness, and you need one word for that. But health is a state of no sickness. It's a state of living sickness free. So you begin by hearing one word for your healing, but you don't stop there. If you don't want to get back to sickness, you hear more words. Proverbs 4.20, my son, attend to my words, plural, to my words. He sent his word, one word, but attend to his words so that you can graduate from healing to health because what God promised us is not healing. Healing is elementary. Health is the ultimate. I will bring to you health. I will bring to you health. What God promised in the ultimate is health, not healing. Healing is the passage. Health is the ultimate. For I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. Taught John verse 2, that you may be in health. Ten years to come, if Jesus tarries, you will be testifying. Ten years ago, I used to be sick. Ten years after, I'm no longer sick. If Jesus tarries, you'll be saying, 30 years ago, I used to be sick. 30 years after, I'm as strong as stone. Hallelujah. When God's word comes, recovery comes swiftly and quickly. Please follow me very quietly, you know, carefully. When God's word comes, it comes swiftly and quickly. Because according to scriptures in Psalm 147 verse 15, 147 verse 15, the Bible says, His word runneth swiftly. His word runneth swiftly. He sendeth forth His commandment upon her. And His word runneth swiftly. God's word is a runner. God's word is a pursuer. It pursues sickness. When it is sent concerning it, God's word runs swiftly. The word swift means to overtake. God's word overtakes sicknesses. He overtakes diseases. For God's word is quick. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God is quick. The word of God is quick. That's why God's word brings quick recovery to the sick. God's word 
usually brings quick recovery. God's word does not delay. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. The centurion said, speak the word only. Speak the word only, and my child shall be healed. And then in verse 13, after Jesus spoke the word, in verse 13, as Jesus said, go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it unto thee. And his servant was healed the self same hour. The self same hour. The hour when Jesus spoke was the hour when the healing was performed in the servant's body. Also in John, John chapter 5, we have a certain ruler, maybe the same person being narrated in John, John chapter 4, from verses 49 to 54. This certain noble came to Jesus in verse 49, chapter 4, and pleaded with him. He said, sir, come down, because my child is dying. And Jesus spoke the word that that child will not die. Go thy way, thy son liveth. Go thy way, thy son liveth. Whatever is dying in your body, I say to you, it is living now. Go thy way, thy son liveth. I remember someday, somebody stood in the gap for his relation, his her brother. It was a lady, she stood in, 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 in the gap for her brother far in the east. And I said to the people, check your time at this time. Check your time at this time if you are standing in the gap for somebody, for somebody and ask the person in the morning what happened. And that same night as the word was going on, an angel of the Lord went and visited the brother right there to bring healing to the body. I speak concerning any of your relations right now or any member of this church that is in any hospital bed at this same hour. Check your time everybody. Check your time everybody because God is confirming his word right now. At this same hour. I send forth the healing power of God in the name of Jesus. If that word can travel to a far place, then how much more will it reach you that is seated here, here in the world now? Therefore, I speak to your body. I speak to your kidneys. I speak to your liver. I speak to your brain. I speak to your legs. I speak to your back. Every part of you receive life right now in the name of Jesus. And Jesus said, get back to that passage. Jesus said, go thy way. Go thy way. Thy son liveth. And the man believed the word. Say with me, I believe the word. Now. The man believed the word that Jesus has spoken unto him. And he went his way. He went his way. And then in verse 54, verse 54, the Bible tells us that when he inquired, this is again, verse 53, when he inquired of the time when this was done, they said to him, it was the same hour, 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 in verse 52, the same hour in which he believed it was done. Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. That was the time Jesus spoke the word. When you make inquiry, about anyone that's afflicted in your neighborhood, as your family member, they will tell you the same hour, about 7.55, the healing was established. You will get that testimony in the name of Jesus. Somebody begin to check your body right now. Begin to check your body right now because that stranger is no longer there. Your healing is established right now. Very shortly, you will jump out to share your testimony. If you believe, I shout aloud, loud, Amen. The quality of light determines the quality of your health. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8, it said, Your light shall break forth as of obscurity, and as a result, your health will spring forth speedily. Your health. Health responds to light. Health responds to revelation. The intensity of light determines the quickness. The quickness of your rising. Arise, shine, arise, shine. Why? For your word, your light has come. And the glory of the Lord was risen upon you. When the word of Bartimaeus came, he received his healing. The master stopped. He said, call him here. Bring him here. And as he responded to the master, the healing was established. Everyone who has come to master Jesus, the great physician in the house this morning, your healing is fully established to you. <laughs> believe it, raise your hand and shout, I believe Lord. <laughs> now, it's important for you to understand that you have a right to total health. 
Health is your entitlement. It's not what you beg for. The price has been paid. You don't beg to take delivery what, for what you already paid for. You don't beg to take delivery. If you go to car shop and you bought a car, you don't need to say, excuse me, can I drive away the car? No, it's, it's already paid for. Jesus already paid the price for your health. Take it, it is yours. Jesus paid the price. It's already yours. Say with me, health is mine. Yes. Say it very angrily. Yes. Very violently. Yes. The violent take a deep by force. Say it one more time. Yes. You see, you don't get healed by nothing. You get healed by violence. You are not to be nursed to healing. You are to step out of sickness. I step out of this sickness. I told you my testimony in 1993 when I had a strange backache. As a pastor, I went to minister in the church, one of our churches, and then with style, I will stand up. With style, I will sit down. Man, I got back to my hotel room, very angry, and I shifted the window blind. I said, come on, you foul, unclean spirit, tormenting my back. That is the way out get out now before I open my eyes and as soon as I finished speaking I sat down like a proper Christian no more with style no more bending my back and from that moment that devil disappeared take it violently say with me I have a right to live healthily <laughs> diabetes is not your portion high blood pressure is not your portion Cancer is not your portion. Yeah. Eye problem is not your portion. Yeah. Partial blindness is not your portion. Yeah. Receive your healing now. Yeah. You have a right to live in divine health. Jesus paid a price. Isaiah chapter 53 from verses 4 to 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Everything was loaded and placed on his head. He carried it for you. That thing you are carrying now has been carried by Jesus. Jesus was beaten with all kinds of affliction. He had cancer was given to him. Diabetes was pushed on him. He was sinless. He carried the sin and carried the consequence of the sins. He carried everything you are carrying now. You have the right to say, no, I don't want it again. No, clear off my way. No, I don't want it again. Shake the beast to the fire and you will no longer feel any harm. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. What more? It will be glad for you to know that by reason of your redemption, you have become a lively stone. You have become a lively stone. Can anybody injure stone? No. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5. The Bible described us as lively stone. Stones with life. Ye also as lively stones, lively stone. Anybody trying to wound a stone is wasting his time. You are a lively stone. Build up a spiritual house. You are a lively stone. You can no longer be hot. You are immune to all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Things should no longer affect you adversely. You should rather be affecting things positively. Sickness should no longer at, 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 you know, uh, you know, afflict you. No, you are the one to be healing the sick. There is a story of a man called John G. Lake, very great man of God, who had a mission to South Africa. He was living among deadly, you know, people plagued with deadly diseases. He was so conscious of eternal life and the power of God that he carried. One day he went into the midst of the afflicted people. He studied medicine. 
he left medical school because he discovered that it was all about guesswork you know a doctor will call you and ask you uh, how did you sleep you know did you sleep with your head this way okay that's why the neck is paining you <laughs> how many times did you go to the toilet uh, you went to the toilet. okay i think that's diarrhea they will ask you questions to give you the prescription but jesus only has any question if you check the gospel jesus never asked any question the question he asked is will you be made whole Will you be made whole? Very strange medical practice. Will you be made whole? That's why when people come to me, they ask, they want to tell me many things. I say, no, don't tell me anything. What do you want? He says, sir, let me explain what has happened. Let me tell you the Genesis. I tell him, don't tell me Genesis. I have the revelation. <laughs> I have the revelation. So this man went to South Africa and he was living in the midst of the people. One day he was so power drunken, he put his hand on the mouth of a foaming afflicted person. And he, he said, bring the microscope. They brought the micro microscope. When they placed under the microscope, all the germs and all the viruses had died. Eternal life in his life killed all the germs. From today, your body will be destroying every virus. From today, your body will be destroying every virus. From today, no sickness survives in your body again. That's why, like I keep telling you, if you wake up any day, you feel any ache on your back, don't listen to the ache. You start going out, and as you go out, the backache will be going out. Stop wasting your time with the devil. Stop disturbing yourself about suggestions of the enemy. Stop disturbing yourself about the dreams you dream that somebody pursued you and said somebody, you know, was hitting your leg. Wake up in the morning, shake that leg. Shake the devil back to his position. Shake the devil off. Not your body. Not your body. Not your body. Not your body. If there is any virus in anyone's body now, as I speak, that virus dies now. Please note also, by redemption, you are a new creature. By redemption, you are a new creature. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If a man be in Christ, are you in Christ? I'm not sure I heard you very well. Are you in Christ? If a man or woman like you is in Christ, and you have said you are in Christ, then he is a new creature. And I mean, old things, including sickness and disease, are past away they are past they passed and are away and all things spirit soul and body all things the eyes the kidney the heart all things are become new hallelujah Please note that God's word is fire. According to Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29, it burns off chaff from people's life. It burns off chaff. Therefore, every chaff of your life, as I speak right now, the chaff is burnt off. Yeah. Jeremiah 23, 29. 23, 29. It's not my word as fire. It's not my word as hammer. It burns off every chaff, every chaff, every chaff of sickness, every chaff of disease within your body, hiding, diagonized or undiagonized. The fire of God consumes them in the name of Jesus. You see, something about fire. Fire doesn't take permission before it burns. Fire doesn't take permission. Fire does not take permission. In the same way, God's word does not take permission. God's word is not permissive. God's word is authoritative. God's word works authoritatively. You don't need Satan's permission. You don't need the permission of your body. You don't need the permission of your doctor to live well. You don't need his opinion to live well. God's word has said so. Every chaff of your life is burnt off this morning in the name of Jesus. As I close, I'd like to remind you that we are before the communion table this morning. The mystery of the blood and the flesh 
of Jesus. The communion, simply put, is a medium for transmitting the life of Christ. Jesus instituted it in Matthew chapter 26, from verse 26 down to 29. As he was seated at meal with his disciples, Jesus took the bread. He took the bread, the bread they were eating, not imported bread. Not imported bread. The one they were eating, he took the bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. He took bread and he did not say, eat bread. He said, eat my body. So as Jesus spake, the bread was changed into his body. So what is said before you now is some kind of bread. But as I speak to it now, it becomes the body of Jesus. And in his body, there was no sickness, no disease, no affliction. Therefore, as I administer this body of Jesus to you, anti-sickness, anti-disease, that is his body, immune to sickness and diseases, I decree that this become divine inoculation, divine immunization for you today. And he took the blood and he said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. He said, take, drink ye all of it, all of you, all of you, drink ye all. All of them were qualified to drink. In certain quarters, you have to reach some level in the church system before you can take the communion. But Jesus said, take ye all of you, all of you, take it, all of you, all of you, all of you, take it, all of you, take it. Because before it may become your turn to take the communion, Satan can kill you. All of you, take it. All of you, take it. Someone says, see, see, I can't take communion like that except it is a priest who put it in my mouth. He gave it to them. He said, take. He didn't put it in their mouth. He just circulated it. He said, take. Take. Take you all of it. And what more? Jesus said, as often as you do. So it can be taken as often as you want. As often. First Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 13 to 16, to verses 23 to 26, 23 to 26, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. As often, as often, as often as you want, take it. As often, as you want, as often, as you want. If you read down the line to verse 26, that's what Jesus said. As often, as often, verse 25, as often as you want, take it. As often. Verse 25, as often as you want, you take it. So you can take it every day. You can take it in the morning, take it in the afternoon, take it in the evening. As often as you drink it in remembrance of me, drink it as often as you want. Depending on the state of your sickness, doctors will tell you to take some drugs once in a day. Sometimes they will take it twice in a day. Sometimes they take it three times in a day. So if your affliction is intensive, give it intensive treatment by taking intensive communion. Take it intensively. Take it intensively. We have had testimonies over and over again of people. A woman said the child was afflicted. The buttock of the child was getting rotten. But she started serving the child coming on. Within three days, the rottenness gave way. As often as you are dying, you say, you see, hey, I don't want to take this thing. Except the priest, give it to me. You will die before the priest comes. In the first church, they were taking it every day. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, verses 42 and 46. Verse, verse 42 and 46. They were taking it every day. Every day. They were taking it every day. They continued separately in the Apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. And in verse 46, from house to house, on a daily basis, from house to house. And they continued daily, 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 with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house. They were not just in the church, but from house to house. They did eat their meat with gladness and singleness every day. So you can prepare it in your house. You can take it in your house. You can knock out the devil. You are dying at night. You say, well, let me wait till uh, Wednesday service or Sunday service before I take it. They say, time will kill you before Wednesday. As often as you do. This morning, Satan will not escape. Yeah. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. What you have to Something has happened already. Amen. Now, quickly, before we rise up to bless this communion, if you are seated somewhere, you know you are not born again, you have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that is the first thing to do. He gave the communion to his disciples, not to anybody he found by the wayside, to his disciples. 
If you are not his disciple, you are not entitled to taking this communion. Ushers may not stop you, but if you take it, it can't work for you because you are not a child of God. It will be like, like snack when you take it. But it will become health to you if you are born again. Wherever you are seated, you know you are not born again. You have not given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are not yet his disciples. How do I know whether I'm a disciple of Christ? I will know by the joy that I have, by the peace that I enjoy, which Jesus only the Prince of Peace gives. Whatever you have, something is telling you already. You are the one the pastor is talking about. I'd like you to stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. Give me your life to Jesus right now, right now. Stand to your feet. Everyone who wants to make this decision, you will never regret it. Stand up now. Stand up now. Stand up now. I'm giving my life to Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm getting saved this morning. God bless you. God bless you. They are everywhere. Now, some others are here this morning. You have been born again before now, but you are backslidden. Your love for God is getting cold. You are no longer interested in church. You are no longer interested in talking to God in prayer. You are no longer interested in reading the Bible. Satan is putting coldness around you. And you know it. You are suffering some dryness that you can't understand. Well, don't wait to understand it. Run quickly to Jesus. You want to get restored back to the faith? Stand to your feet as well. I'd like to pray for you right now. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Now, all of you who have stood up, and those of you who will still stand up to join them, I'd like you to come to the altar here right now. As you are coming, come with your Bible, come with your bag, come with everything you came to church with. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, right now. Come quickly, right now. Come quickly, right now. If you come with a little child, don't leave the child behind. Don't give your child to anybody to carry for you. Just quickly, quickly come, quickly come. There are people who will help you to take care of your child here around the altar. If you are coming, hasten your step down here. Hasten your step down here. Rush down here for your salvation. Rush down here for your healing. Rush down here for your blessing. Church, get excited, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Something is happening right now. Somebody is receiving healing right now. Somebody is receiving miracles right now. If you are the one, a big shout for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, as they are coming, please be reminded of the books of the month, powerful titles that will chase sickness and disease away from your body. Please get these books. The list is there in the announcement bulletin. God will change your story through the voice of interpreters in the books that are available for you. Also, you have the, the teachings loaded in CDs, MP3s, you know, DVD, VCD. Please pick yours and keep playing it around and around your house. The Miracles Are Real is also out, full of testimonies of God's act in our midst and a brief teaching or two outstanding teachings, one from God's servant, our presiding bishop, and one from our local assembly here. It will be a blessing to you in Jesus' precious name. Shout hallelujah. If you are there, you know you should be here. You are seated, but you are not at peace. You are not at peace. Something is rocking your chair right now. Something is telling you, stand up and go there. You know yourself, you know you are not born again. I can see a number of people, a few dozens, who are still seated here. You want to stand up right now and tell Jesus, I'm coming to you, and tell the devil, leave me alone. You can't hold me down. Stand to your feet and run down here right now. I'm about to pray. I'm about to pray. I'm about to pray. Thank you, Lord. Now, all of you in front here, you are going to pray the most important prayer of your life right now. Bow your heads, all of you in front. Bow your heads in prayer. All of you in front here, close your eyes. Lift up your right hand. All of you in front.